Okay guys, uh, we are doing my 2024 Athens Archery bow build. So Athens sent me up a few bows. I got the Elevate, which is a 32 inch axle axle, six inch brace height, and the Axis 33, 33 being the axle to axle, this is a seven inch brace height. Today, we are gonna build a 32 inch Elevate, uh, and I think we'll do this at another time. So I'm pretty excited to uh, to get this bow going, to build it, and to shoot it. It's, uh, it feels really good right off, uh, right out of the box. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited. I got Wyatt today, he's helping me. Um, if you guys are listening to this, I suggest you head on over to our YouTube channel because you're gonna get a better idea of uh, what we're doing, but I'll try my best to explain it in the most detail I can. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so I already broke down my bow from last year. Um, this is the PSE Omen. Uh, for the listeners of the show, you know, I shot this bow last year. It was a good bow, killed a few animals with it. But now we're going to be taking everything. I've already taken it off this bow. We're going to be applying it to the Elevate. So, super excited to get this going. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the timing of this bow. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to put on my arrow rest. Um, this is the Prophecy from AAE. My man Greg Poole got me hooked on this uh, arrow rest and I absolutely love it. So I'm going to throw this on this bow. The thing I, I do like about this axis is it has two um, mounts for your rest. It also has the dovetail for the integrated rest. but. Um, these uh, AAE prophecies, they don't come in this yet. I don't know if they're ever going to, but uh, either way, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna bring this camera in, or why it is. We're gonna get this rest on. So you can see the double burger holes. Those are nice because it just limits any movement that might occur in your rest. So we'll get one in here, snug it up. We'll get the other one in here. Snug it up. So I think you guys can see that. So what I like to do is I like to have my rest as close and as tight to the riser as possible. We'll take my Allen key, which I already have conveniently set up. I don't normally have it set up like that, but for this, we're gonna do it normally. I have to throw it all, all the Allen keys on the table and look for them. So we're going to snug this up. We're not going to we're not going to crank on it obviously. We don't want to crank on anything. Um, okay. We've got that on. Now let's back this camera up a little bit Wyatt. Okay, next is we need to put a D-loop on here. To do that, we're taking our square. Now what I like is I like the bottom of my arrow through the center of the burger holes. Um, now everybody's a little different. Some people like their arrow right through the center of the burger holes. It's all personal preference. For me, like I said, I like my, re my arrow through the center of my burger holes. Um, I'm not gonna be worried too far, too much on my rest, other than the height, the location of, normally it's 13 16 off the riser. We're not gonna worry about that right now. And we're not gonna worry about tying in the cable yet. We're just gonna get my D-loop on so we can check the timing in the drawboard. So, oh, I gotta put that back on. So actually, I think I'll show you guys where I like my, you can see, you can see where my rest arrow is. Here, trying to work the camera here. Wait, flick that light on there, buddy. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's better. So you guys can see how the bottom of the arrow now run will run through the center of the burger holes. So now what we have to do is we need a tie D loop. So we need thought I had one out. I shoot TKOs. Uh, these are a five mil arrow. So we need the knock that matches the arrow we're gonna shoot because we don't want our D-loop pinching 
on our knock. So your square will have a little line indicating exactly where it is. Now what I like to do is I like to take a rubber band and secure it to my string. That way, get that out of the way for a sec, it will just ensure that my knock that I have set there as a, rep, a guide does not slip while I'm tying my knock points on. I put it on the bottom obviously because it, you know, if it goes up it's fine. So you can see it can go up but it can't go down and it's in the position that, that we want it. So with that, we're going to go with yellow because yellow is cool. Cut a little bit of serving and we are going to tie the top knock point. So what I do is I do a double clove hitch. Some people have different names for these knots, but for me this really is the best knot. Once you pull it tight, it really doesn't want to let go. So I'm going to make a little bit of adjustments there. Now I do have a little bit of a gap. I'll move the camera closer while you want to move it closer. So you can see, get it a little bit closer to the buddy, right in tight. Yeah, bring it right in. I want to show people not that close. Okay, so you can see there how I'm still going to have a little play on my knock once my D loop is in. That way, when I'm at full draw, it's not pinching on this knock. Okay, you can back up again, buddy. So I tied a double there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm on the other side, I'm going to tie a single. I'll try to do this. I'll try to do this backwards here so you guys can see it. I don't even know if you can see it there with my hands in the way. But anyway, I get it where I want it and then I really give it a good pull. So I'm going to cut this off a quarter inch from the string. We'll burn that later. Now. I'm going to remove the elastic. My knock will sit there. Try to get it up. It should stay somewhat. And again, I'm going to tie my try to tie my double clove hitch here. So one, two. And I want to get it into the position I want it. Again, you can see, I'll bring that camera a little closer, White, get it right in here. We'll show you. Do you see how much play I have in there? That just will ensure that when I'm at full draw and this string is at its angle, it's not going to pinch on this knock, which will have an effect on my arrow. Okay, back her up again, Wyatt. So now that I've done that, I'll tie my single on the other side. Again, I'll try to do this backwards so I'm not standing in front of the camera. So with that, we're going to cut it again, roughly quarter of an inch, and we're going to burn the ends. I burn the top ones first. That way the top ones don't light on fire while I'm burning the bottom ones. Okay, now that we have our knock points, we are going to tie in our D loop. So what I do is take my D loop and I fluff up the end, flare it out there a bit, and then I just burn it and simply mushroom it. I'm sure you guys have all seen that. I'm hoping you have anyway. Everybody should know how to tie their own D loop. So I try not to light it on a fire. I just want it melted. Now. I shoot a thumb release. Now, why I bring that camera in here, I'm going to explain this to you guys how, here, move it around to the side here. Okay, so I am a right handed shooter, so my, uh, my release is in my right hand. Now, 
as you can see here, I'll hold it with my fingers. I'll clip it in my release. And I'll show you guys this on when we're in the draw board, what effect it has on it. So this is the string, like this. I turn my hand and for my anchor, which anchors on my jaw like this. Now, if you can see the camera, the angle it has on the string, if I have my release here and I twist it, you can see it naturally wants to twist to the left, right? So that's the way I tie it onto my string. I put the top on the, on the left side of the string and the bottom on the right. So again, everybody should know how to tie their own D-loop. We're not going to get into that. I don't like using pliers for my top. Part. I just kind of work it with my fingers and pull it as tight as I can with my hands. The problem is I find is if you use your pliers on your string here, it damages your string. So we have it on the left side of the string. Now I'm going to bring it around the bottom to the right and I am going to tie in this side. So uh, normally I use BCY 23, which is a little smaller than this 24, but unfortunately I don't have any in yellow right now. I am going to be putting custom strings on this bow, so we will put black 23 on there then. I'm going to get yellow strings and I'll tie a black D-loop on there, but I kind of yellow is my color. So again, I flared up the end. It's freezing cold in this garage. So then we take our pliers and we give it a good tighten, like so. Now I like my D-loop a little bigger than most because of the release I use and I'll get into that a little bit later. So again, I, this could be adjusted a little bit. I might have to melt this, but a lot of the times I have to reposition my D-loop because of my peep sight. So I'm not too worried about that yet. I just want to get a D-loop on here get my knock set, so then we can put it in the draw board, and then we're gonna check the timing, which we're gonna do right now. Okay, so we got it in, we got the hook running through our D-loop. I always put a safety around the string as well. Now, I am somewhat fanatical about, here, back that up a little bit, what? I am somewhat fanatical about drawing a bow back without an arrow in it. So the left side, this side of my garage, there is a concrete wall there. I am going to knock an arrow and draw it back and you just wanna make sure nobody is standing obviously on that side. So, we are, now one thing is, very rarely do you get a bow that is timed properly. Um, and I should add actually here before we get started, what I should add is this bow came out of the box already set to 28 and a half, which is my draw length. So I didn't adjust those normally. If you're buying it off the rack, your pro shop should set it up to your draw length for you. Um, so normally a bow, here I'll help you guys out here. So normally a bow does not come timed perfectly. Here, I'm gonna have to adjust this. Wanna pull that up, Wyatt? Yeah. Sorry guys, we're just working the camera and doing this. But as you can see, this bow is timed perfectly right out of the box, which is pretty awesome. So, so the next thing we are going to do is now that we're in this position, we're gonna, I'm gonna pop my peep sight in. Now, I run three and seven eighths, when the bow is at full draw, I run three and seven eighths from the top of the bow to my peep sight. Now this does change a little bit from axle to axle because axle to axle is gonna ch have a, a different effect on the angle of the string where it sits at anchor point on your face. So, but I run 32 inches 
axle to axle, or 32, on a 32 inch axle to axle bow, we're running this three and seven eighths off the top of the arrow. So I drew this down because I need to get my peep sight. I need to get my pen. So again, now we, here, why bring that camera right over here, buddy. We are gonna go to full draw. Uh, back to full draw. One thing I really love about this bow is these big string stops it has. Or sorry, it cable stops, it is awesome. Okay, so we have a tape measure here somewhere, don't we, Wyatt? Uh, yeah, it's right. There's one right there. Oh, there's one. Yeah. There's one right there, okay. You're so good, so now, like I mentioned, I am three and seven eight. What I do is I mark it with a felt pen. You can put your bow in a vise to do this. Sometimes it's a little easier. Um, I'm fine with breaking the string when it's like this. Okay, now we line it back up, the arrow fell out, but we line it back up with the little felt mark that we have, and there we go. Okay, okay, what? Now, as you can see, we have an issue with the angle of our D loop and the angle of our peep sight. So what I will do later is after I tie this peep sight in, I might cut this off and retie my D loop. But for now, we're going to go back to the uh, we're going to go back to the vise and we're going to set the distance off the riser for the rest, and then we're going to come back over here and we're going to time the bow. We're going to put it in the press for that. So. So 13 sixteenths is the standard is the standard measurement off the riser that you want your arrow. Why can you pass me that arrow over there, buddy? Uh, yeah. So that's a good starting point. On my little ruler here, you can see I've scribed in a mark. You might not be able to see that. So we are right now. We are just slightly over one inch, so we need to bring the rest into the riser. We'll try, I'll try to do it here without obstructing the view, actually. I have a specially made Allen key just for this. As you can see, I've cut it down so that way it fits in those places that are tight because, as you can tell, it's a little tight in there. So you just have to loosen it a bit. And now we are going to bring the rest in. And I'm not going to show you guys this. You're going to have to just trust me what I'm doing is I am putting the center of the arrow on my mark, which indicates 13 sixteenths. We are gonna paper tune this bow a little later, but for now, we're gonna get it right to there. Okay, we then snug it up. So now we already put our square on the bow, but I always check my level with levels and an arrow. So, let's do that now. We put right there and right there. Okay, we're looking good, so. We are very close to it. I'll show you guys that bubble. The arrow could go down a little tiny bit. So I'm going to make that adjustment now. 
So again, you just loosen this off. For this top, you can call me a lot of things. Organized isn't one of them. Okay, so there we go. We got it now. So we are going to move this down it, just a tiny bit. So we're good there. Good there, Wyatt. So now we have that. We're going to tighten this up. Okay. Now we're going to put this bow in the press and we are going to tie in our cable or sorry our rest cable to the cable itself. So we'll go back over to the press Wyatt. How are we doing there? Maybe bring that camera right up here buddy. It's right here. So the inside cable is what we want. We want to make sure that the string is going to be going down not going up which down activates the active activates the rest up obviously wouldn't so what I do is actually you know what might be easier for the cameras if I switch the bow around okay so again how I tie in my cables I'm gonna cut off a good chunk of serving keep that there And roughly where my string stop cape uh, is, that's where I am going to tie in Normally this is it's a little easier to do when I'm not trying to show or to keep my fingers out of the way for the camera. So right there. I broke my cable and I was able to get my serving through the center of it. Now what I'm going to do is do the same thing that I did to my knock points is I'm going to tie a double clove hitch. Pull that through once. I'm going to attempt to tie a double clove hitch. There we go. Pull that through twice. You see it there, Wyatt? So there we go. It's like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie half hitches because I want to build this, this knot here up. And then I'm going to tie my rest cable around that and that's going to stop it from moving up or down. I'll explain why that is handy to have a little later here. So again, I'm just going to tie this. And I think, well, let me back up a little bit. I'm just going to tie this in real quick because me trying to do that for the camera a whole bunch of times while showing it is going to take forever. Okay, so as you guys can see, I've tied a fairly good sized knot in my bow. Now I'm tying the exact same knot I used to tie my D loop on, and I am just going to snug it up to the knot for now, right there. And we're actually going to adjust the timing of the rest at the rest itself. So we just want to pull that. Nice and got now you can see this actually will slide up and down or sorry down it won't be able to slide up because of that knot and that knot that knot actually goes through the cable itself and it okay so now what we're going to do is we are going to set the timing for a rest so we have our cable we loosen that set screw there and then you want to make sure that the set screw is in a position where the cable is able to pull through with a little bit of force. Not a lot of force, but you don't want it to be too easy as well. So, now that we have that back up a little bit, Wyatt, we simply draw the bow back 
Now what I like to do is I like to give it the slightest little pull forward. We're talking minim minimal pull, maybe a sixteenth of the inch, if that at the most. So pull that, pull that tight, and then I'm going to cut it off roughly right there. And then same thing, I got that flared out, fluffed up. I am just going to melt the end of it, mushroom it out a bit. Now, even if something happened, that still wouldn't pull out. Okay, now that we have our rest timing set, we are gonna put on my site. So I am putting on the Spot Hog triple stack. Uh, I've used that site for a few years now. I really love it. Now this bow, these bows do have the Picatinny rail adjustment. Um, I do have a spot hog with the Picatinny mount on it. We are going to save that sight for the other bow, the axis. So what we have to do right now is we have to pull this Picatinny rail mount off this bow because it does get in the way of the dovetail. So. These are a Torx head. So we loosen the nose. Drop it on the ground. I can't feel that, it's so cold in here right now. Oh, I can't feel the ends of my fingers. So I'm fumbling around here, so bear with me. Okay, so now that we got that off, we don't want to lose that, because we might need it later on. So why are you able to bring that camera around so the folks can see what we're doing here? Actually on the other side. So we have our dovetail mount. We're going to be mounting. As you can see, here let me take over here. Yeah. As you can see, there are two, actually four holes for your mount. That is nice because it gives you a little bit of allows for a little bit of adjustment up or down. I'm going to go up as high as I can on this. So I will try to do this without getting in your guys' way, but it's not the easiest to do. So let's get that in there. Grab my other screw and there we go. I did it. So we just put that. We got that in there. I just snug it up. I get them both snug and then I'll give them another quick tighten. I don't have the right Allen key though. Okay. Now, um, I like the spot hog as far away from the riser as possible. Um, now this is different for everyone. Obviously you have to find what works for you and go with that. Where is my, over here. Okay, what, well, I'm gonna get in front of the camera here and I'm just gonna tighten this up. So how I do is I snug it up and then if you can see why can you show the folks these little indents on the dovetail? There's actually a little knob at the end of the set screw and it sets, get back up again buddy, and it sets, fits, sorry, perfectly into those dovetail mounts. As you can see, like I said, I like my sight as far off my riser as possible. I'm getting pretty excited to shoot this thing. So, I run a 15 inch stabilizer. 
This is the CBE Spider. Now, I don't like a strap, a wrist strap. Uh, again, that's personal preference. Everybody's different. Um, I just don't like one. One cool thing about this bow, like most of the new bows, it does have another mount if you wanted to put your stabilizer bar down lower, which you see some people do. You can also put, put it down there if you wanted like that. It could run a double even if you wanted to be crazy. I don't, I don't personally, I don't like it. So there we go. We're starting to get somewhere now, eh? Okay, for my back bar, I like to run a six inch back bar. So I have a six inch back bar this is a CBE 6 inch, same as the, the 15 inch, just in the 6 inch. I have a quick connect. This is the Avalon. So Wyatt, as you can see again with these Athens, they have an actual spot. Can you get in there buddy? They have an actual spot for your back bar. These are a little tricky to get into because of the strings. So, get it in there as tight as you can with your hands, and then this is sort of a process. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. As you noticed, I run one weight off my back bar. I also run a single weight off my front stabilizer. So we are set up to go. Now what I am going to do is I am going to tie in my peep sight and then I am going to retie a new D-loop on that matches the position of my peep sight. So I have a little bit of serving left over. No point in wasting it. Can we make that work? Actually we're going to have to save that for later. We're going with yellow. So for this, I like to melt the ends of it just because it's easier to keep feeding it through. So before you start tying in your peep sight, I suggest you wax your boat. And now it is pretty cold. So back up here a bit, Why we are going to have to heat this wax up because like I said, it is pretty damn cold being the middle of winter, so we're just going to quickly heat this up. Oh, that feels good on the hands. Here, why get your hands in there? Oh, there you go. How's that, buddy? Good. Yeah? Okay. okay. So now, we can get our wax on our string. Oh, you want to work it in there. Good. This makes tying your peep a lot easier if you wax it now. Plus it's hard to wax your string where you need to with that serving in the way. It's hard to, for it to really get in there. Okay, so. Halfway through. And again. You guys by now can probably guess the knot I'm going to tie on here. The wax is sticking to my fingers. I'm trying to do this so you guys can all see what I'm doing. You see that there, Wyatt? Yeah. Okay, so there we go. I just tied a single. Now, I always tie my top in first because that way if I was going to tie in the bottom first I'd have to constantly be moving the string out of the way. So how I tie it is number 14 is my lucky number and I don't like my peep to move at all so I'm going to wrap this around my cable seven times and the nice thing about having the wax here is you can see the serving is sticking 
to the to the string. Sorry, not the cable. I think I said cable last time. You guys know what I meant. So we're gonna go seven wraps. So we got four, five. Nice and evenly spread out. My hands in the way. Uh, you're good now. Good. So what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and that'll be seven when I go like this. So then again, everybody should take it upon themselves to learn how to tie in a peep sight. You should know how to tie a D loop and basically just having a good understanding of your bow. I'm catching on. What am I catching on there? Oh, that little. Having a good understanding of how your bow works will make you a more efficient archer, in my opinion. I've got a bit of a knot on the end of that, so I'm going to cut that off. We're going to melt that now anyway. So, like I was saying, it is freaking cold as heck in here. So, my fingers aren't working that great. There we go. Okay, so that's seven and seven, my lucky number 14. Now, it's so cold and lighter doesn't even want to stay lit. Oh, so we're gonna burn that. I like a little extra, that way it melts it nice and good. So, why do you want to hop around on this side of me? We're simply gonna do the other side now. Back over to the other side now. Okay. Let's cut this. Melt that. Okay, and we're going to cut this D loop off. And we're going to match the position of my peep sight. So we don't have too much peep twist. Cut this off. Um, I don't know if I said this before, but I prefer a BCY 23. This is a BCY 24. Um, the BCY 23 just has a little less stretch in it than the 24. I just don't have any. Uh, I don't have any BCY23 in yellow and I wanted to use a little bit of yellow on this bow because I like yellow. So now you can see my, can you bring that over here Why? You see my peep sight pipe, <laughs> my peep sight is in line with my D loop. My, everything's timed, it's time to let an arrow fly so. Okay so first shot. Oh, pretty smooth. Holds nice, really nice at the back wall. That's pretty nice. Um, I love this grip that these guys have. I don't know, can you see that? How thin it is? It is really nice. Um, Man, that's nice. I'm going to shoot that arrow again. Man, that is super smooth. Yep, 
Yeah, that's smooth. That's nice. It is absolutely dead in my hand. Really smooth through the valley and awesome holding at the back wall. So this bow right now is, this bow comes in a 70 to 90 let off. It's on 70 right now. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot one more. I think we'll see how she does through paper. I, I, what I haven't, one thing I haven't done is I haven't leveled my sight to my bow, but uh, I'm not super worried about that right now. I was just really excited to, uh, to get a few arrows. Oh man, is that ever smooth. That's pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie to you. I am super impressed. Um, okay. There's a few other things I have to do. You still have to level your sight with your bow and um, fine tune my rest. Um, it's set up to 13 16 and where the square was originally. Um, but before we do that, I'm gonna throw some arrows at paper just to see where we're at um, before we start playing with the rest because um, I've had this before um, where you set everything up to you know, 13 16 squared off the string and it's shooting bullet holes at paper. So um, normally we are able to shoot um, 21 feet in this garage, but like I was saying, we got a little bit of a reno going on. So I'm gonna go outside and Wyatt, if you can just uh, point the camera at the paper, uh, we'll throw some arrows. Okay, let's check her out. So it looks like it has a small left tear, um, but that's why I like to shoot it at paper first before I start playing with my rest. It's a good indication of where I have to go rather than just diving into everything, putting the levels on it, and then um, having to bring it back to where it was originally. So it's a really nice bow. I'm super excited to, uh, to shoot this bow this year. Uh, I'm super excited to get that 33 going. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna play with the play with the re uh, rest a little bit, um, not too much. I don't think I have to adjust it too much. Um, if it's a lot, I would be shimming my cams, but um, I don't really think I need to. I think if I can just adjust my rest a tiny little bit, I think we'll uh, we'll knock that out. But uh, I'm gonna keep shooting this because it is a, a dream shooter. Thanks, guys.